Good morning, welcome to Thursday's Thought for the Day. Well, it seems, uh, oh, before, before I carry on, you might hear a lot of banging and other people talking and possibly a radio going in the background. We're having some work done in the house. So um, that, that's what you can hear. Um, so uh, apologies for that. But it feels uh, there's, there's quite a lot happening. You know, Tom yesterday on Tuesday talked about, um, you know, us both having that dry period uh, and not quite being ready to share our thoughts for the day. And uh, but there seems to me now to, to be quite a lot of happening, a lot of movement, and uh, I, I really want to talk to you about um, lots of things. And I could put it all together in one long and meandering thought for the day, but each thing would probably lose some of its meaning and the points would be lost. So I had planned to talk about one thing today, but it's been overtaken by something else. Um, that's that's really on my heart right now. It's it's um, hopefully I'll speak about those other things next week. Um, I hope that that makes some sort of sense to you. Um, anyway, last last week I, I was contacted by someone who was uh, offici going to officiate at a funeral of someone that I'd known in the past, and I was asked to contribute to a sort of eulogy or life reflection of the person who had died. And I'll call that person Bill. That's not his real name because I, I want to maintain some semblance of uh, confidentiality. So I'll call him Bill. Now I got to know Bill uh, a few years ago when I was a member of a local Christian fellowship <clears throat> and was also helping to run a, a charity we'd established called the School of Hope. Uh, now Bill's wife was, was, a, was a Christian and she attended the fellowship church but she was very deeply concerned that Bill didn't share her faith with her. And it wasn't just that he didn't share her faith with her, that he, he, he tried um, consistently, persistently to get her to deny her own faith in, in, in quite a forceful and, and difficult manner. And um, in time, his, his difficult behaviours uh, forced his wife to sadly make a decision that, that she had to leave him uh, and I don't believe that she ever lost her love for him and I certainly know that he never lost her love for her but understandably um, given the circumstances which were quite dire really she, she could take no more. Now Bill had been a, a strong tough character who'd been literally feared uh, in his local area. He was known for his fighting prowess both on the street and in a more legitimate way in the boxing ring. He was a proud man and saw violence or he had seen violence as a way of dealing with problems that he'd faced, challenges that he that, that he faced, people who um, dissed him as he would say. And uh, he, he was an animal lover, he loved animals. And he kept an aviary, different times. Um, he, was, he was brought up on a, a farm, and uh, so he'd always got that connection. He loved, he, he did, he trained dogs as well, but he trained them to be aggressive. The more aggressive the dog, the better he thought he'd trained it, and uh, the, the better guard dogs they would be. And he occasionally came to church with his wife, but he couldn't quite fully connect. Sometimes he would come with her and he would sit outside um, in the yard where, we, where the building was. And when we established this charity, um, we established various drop-in groups and he would come in and chat, chat with me. And I found underneath that aggressive, hard exterior was a man of great sensitivity, a man who was beginning to realise as he aged that he, he could no longer command the respect or engender fear in others like he once could. And he said to me one day, 
He said, I know it's, it's, it's not the right way to live. It's, it's, it's never been the right way to live. And I found a man who was searching for meaning beyond that which he'd lived. And one who was really reaching out for love. The pride was still there, but it was a breaking pride. And I remember he wanted me to help him write a memoir of his life that we would, and I would, we would sit each week and I would write as he talked. And we must have filled a couple of notebooks. I wonder what ha what's happened to those notebooks. It was interesting to hear of his early life and I c came to understand what had influenced the man to live the life as he had. Now, when I moved away from the area and, and, and stopped working for the charity, I, I lost touch with Bill and the first I knew of his passing was when the funeral officiant contacted me. Now, in the funeral uh, and after the funeral, I was literally moved to tears, uh, but they, they weren't tears of sadness. Um, they were tears that were prompted by the Holy Spirit because whenever the Holy Spirit moves within me, tears will always be evident. And everything about the funeral service was just right. What was interesting was the choice of one of the readings, which was an unusual reading for a funeral, certainly an unusual reading for this time of year, Christmas. And it was from the Gospel of Luke, and it was the crucifixion scene with the two thieves and their differing reactions to Jesus on the cross. I had this overwhelming feeling that the thief, the thief that was responding with faith uh, to Jesus' message of salvation, that that thief was Bill. That feeling was strong almost, overwhelmingly strong. And after the funeral service and we went outside and I was talking to his ex-wife and she told me that on her last visit with him she'd, she'd pr been able to pray with him and that she read the passage from Luke to him. She told him that she felt he was the thief that was on the cross that responded in that positive way to Jesus. And Bill saw that it was. You see, Bill had been keeping contact with people he knew were Christians over the over the year over the past few years, me me being one of them, um, one of several really. I, I find out, and um, always searching, always wanting to know, but still with that stubborn character, that that proud man was not quite getting there but the fact that he sought out Christian people and looked to them says a lot and finally before he died he did in fact profess a faith that had been quietly growing within him for many years if you look at that it's a miracle that a thief while in agony himself heard the Spirit of God call him to repentance and acceptance of the forgiveness God was providing through the death of Christ because I think something about Bill um, found it difficult that he could be forgiven and what we, on the cross when the, when the disciples were abandoning Jesus this man on the cross answered the call and Bill in turn saw through his own life's agonies his own failures his own mistakes finally able to, to face them and in facing them in the context of knowing and understanding that he could be forgiven. He answered that call in the same way. His pride finally gave way and the fighter laid down his arms. And what we need, what we learn from this story, from Bill's story, from the story of the man on the cross is that we're all we're all sinners in need of a saviour and no matter how what number our sins are and no matter 
if we or the world thinks that, that our sins are minor or extreme. It's never too late. It's never too late to repent. As long as someone still has a mind and the will to choose life over death, it's never too late to proclaim the gospel, which hopefully will open a heart to a miracle by the Holy Spirit. And in, in Bill's choice, a little miracle happened during that service. Well, you take care and uh, I'll see you, I'll speak to you next Monday. God bless. Bye bye.